Hey guys and gals, my name is Sir Knight. If you guys remember what happened last time, we were here with the live believed in. And uh, yeah, remember what happened last time? We went over here, we tried to beat a rival and everything. We found Felix. Okay, let's go forth. I don't know why I'm talking like this, but I'm talking like this. That's when our eyes made. Why, why, why did our eyes made? For the first time in at least a year and a half, our eyes saw found each other naturally. And that uh, where well, mine was extremely cold, there was some passion in us even. Okay, I don't, okay, I'll stop talking like that. As if it had not changed in all those years. She even smiled at me. Disgusting like so. I walked up to her, unable to keep my cool. What the hell is wrong with you? I blurted out as if it was it, it was intimacy in our relationship when in reality it was the first time I had spoken to her since middle school. Oh shit pickles. Oh shit pickles. Oh excuse me. She said that to me, trying to look like she didn't know the reason of my forceful approach. I feel like she's gonna kick our ass or we're gonna die. I feel like something horrible is gonna happen to us. Ah, oh, what a great actor she is. <laughs> this is my sudden outburst is somehow unwarranted. This is because of a new boyfriend, isn't it? Huh? Is that Jessie I hear? Ugh. She's doing it on purpose now. Don't fuck with me. Oh boy, we got a punch! We gonna fight! I take a hold of her collar aggressively and look at her directly in the eyes. Whisper starts around my ear from what those around us. How about I'm going to hit her? How scary I look? How about someone should stand up to me or something? Yet she simply doesn't look scared at all. She recuperates my stare and simply waits for my words. What the hell is with those grades, huh? You're not taking it seriously anymore. Now that you have a boyfriend, is that it? Oh, my great. Oh, shit, pickles. So, all of this is just because of my great? Yeah? Her eyes become stern. Then, in offensive smiles she once had on her face, it appears viciously. Then tell me, why is it? <laughs> my throat is hurting. Why is she changing all of a sudden? This shouldn't happen. I won't let it happen. Why you ask? I don't know. I just lost interest. That's all. Oh god. Don't give me that shit. I know you. You know what? She pushes me upon hearing my words. I'll lose the hold of the I have a has I have a bad that yeah. You know nothing, Tim. You <laughs> whatever. You better get your act together next time I next time or else I Or else what man? Guy pops out of nowhere and suddenly puts his hand on my shoulder. A warning of kind of way. Is this guy traveling you, Cass? <sighs> Dude, I would have just grabbed him and just fucking knocked his ass out. Well, I mean, the guy that grabbed me, I'm like. I mean, I, oh my god, I am so stupid right now. I shake my hand off me and walk away without as much as looking back. Why did you do a scene though? Next time. I'll show you who's the best between us. You better prepare yourself. I don't know why I'm talking like that. I sound like a horrible idiot. I think she said something back at me, but I didn't hear or care about it. I was so extremely infuriated by her detached attitude to see or hear anything what's going on around me. People were really probably looking at me at the stain in their eyes. <laughs> but it didn't matter to me. Okay, uh, well, technically you almost punched a girl. As if everything I'd be doing all this time had no value. As if it was the only one who saw us as rivals. But things should go be good now. But compared to her the way I did, I've been given a little push she needed. That probably would come on top in the end. I'm sure of it. Oh god, I, I am getting into the this guy and I that's very that's not good. I don't wanna lose this. I don't wanna lose her. But I'll show her. Just you wait, Cassandra. How stupid I was. Not understanding that the person I thought I hated the most was paradoxically the one I needed the most. Is this what I call irony? The past three years I've studied a multitude of subjects. Believe me with an almost blind faith that I was better than everyone else. But here I was, completely clueless about the basic things that were going on in my life. Good for you! It was only after the next exam that I finally realized how distorted my perception of the world really was. Ah oh, shit, we are the fucking yandere. No! Oh my god! I should stop buying games on the frickin' Steam store first page. 
I was so sure of myself. Oh, for that I was. Nothing else occupied my mind during all these weeks of self studying and cram school. I'll beat her fair and square. Last time I wasn't in a fair fight. She had purposely neglected her studies for something as stupid as love. But now it should be different. Guess it's all because this obsessive with my studies and my desire to beat her that I failed to notice something so crucial. Failed to notice what really mattered. I stood in front of the piece of paper. Which number of the top students in our year? If actually searching for the madman for something that was defined supposed to be there. But you did not find anything, son. Not there, not there. <sighs> not even here. What the hell? It's impossible. She must have changed her name or something. That can't be happening. But no matter. I don't have time to scan this damn thing. I was headed with the same conclusion over and over again. She wasn't there. She was not in the top 50. I thought that maybe, as ridiculous as it may sound, she had skipped a year somehow. Even though we were in the same middle of the semester, but she wasn't on top of the list of the third years either. How could that be? I don't know. I don't know how this works. I want to look at those in charge of those stupid lists. They had probably made a mistake, incompetent as they were. That was when I heard something preposterous, something so fucking outrageous that I had no other choice but to snap back at them. Tell things to lots of them. They told me this is the most matter of fact tone there is, that she had quit school a month and a half ago. What? A month and a fucking half? So while I was uselessly, obsessively, and foolishly trying the best I could surpass that girl, even though it was, I thought she was my equal, she was messing around, probably the boys, whatever, and didn't even think of me worth the effort. She probably thought she could really have everything in her life, and she was so fucking good at everything, she simply left me there struggling like a fool, bothered for her own amusement. Oh, god damn it. I didn't want to hear it, I didn't want to believe it, but there's the truth nonetheless. I'm just too fucking blind to see it coming. Fuck! You're an idiot, we're an idiot, you're an idiot, you're a clown. That bitch. She won even when I was uh, sure of winning. The hopeless feeling that I was so eager to make her feel was now stuck within me. <sighs> I would never be able to get rid of it. She was along somewhere that I could go ahead ahead since she had given up entirely. I asked about the reason for her sudden departure and they told me it was because of a personal matter. That is probably the had something to do with her family or whatever lies she had fed them. But I knew that it wasn't fucking bullshit. It was probably the her way of getting back at me. Knowing that I was finally going to beat her. She just got up and quit and surely it never happened. That's when I had a revelation. What if I decided to wait for her for another year? Yeah, that'll be a great idea. All I needed to do was probably fail and then. But then I remember that I just stopped top second place and I was pretty much set on passing. Dude, just pass. Just ignore all this. This was over. That's the one thing that kept me going. For a time, I seriously wondered what I was going to do with my life. Now that she was gone, I realized that I had nothing pushing me forward. But as soon as it really mattered that much anymore, since I already had to live down the last cell for most of the parts of my youth, stopping was no longer an option for me. Ugh, but why? So I just continued setting the best I could, with a sense of emptiness, a sole source of motivation. High school came to an extre end extremely quickly. Oh, we're out of high school now! On the last day of school, when I decided to glance around me, all of us were happy faces. Everyone had someone to talk to. Friends and family members. And they all looked proud of themselves for some reason. Some even had boyfriends and girlfriends by their side, holding hands and kissing. As though the world no longer had any secrets to fill as them. I was the best in my class and one of the best in the whole school. And yet I knew nothing. I felt nothing. I was already set to go in the top universities of the country. I could see my pro uh, promising future without anyone telling me. Still, I had nothing, something by becoming who I was. Not that much, but since I wasn't one of them, I didn't know what it was th th that what it was that I, that I had lost. Oh, that was chapter one. Oh God, don't tell me this is chapter game. Did you update? Maybe. Yeah. Okay. Don't tell me we're Kira. Don't you tell me we're fucking a murderer. Two years have passed. It took two years before I saw her again. Oh shit, no. By that time, I was well underway under my major, and I was starting to get used to the lifestyle at the university. I was living on my own in a gloomy one-room apartment less than a year. I had zero passion and only knew how to do one thing correctly, which of course was studying, as if that target curse of a long time ago. I really didn't know I was so into it. Yeah, a lot of doors would probably open up to me in the future, but if I, what if I didn't want to enter any of them? They had no motivation to climb up the ladder. I certainly wouldn't have known what to do with all the money being thrown at me. Drugs? Cocaine? 
Super trucks! I don't know. Dude, just uh, you, you messed up your life. But then I guess it's the type of typical attitude that can attract some people. It was as if they were talking to you would be inedible. Boost their own self-esteem. That's what I know how I made my first friend sense. Well, I have ever had friends before. Oh, well, now that I saw him as a friend in the first place, he was most of my classes during high school. And then took us an opportunity to start socializing with me during the courses together. I went with the flow, finding my own amusement with a somewhat carefree demeanor. And that's when one day, out of nowhere, he decided to find me to this... I don't remember how to pronounce it. I can't call it a date, so... A group date? Maybe? Ah, fuck it. Anyway, I was at the thing with a group of men and women of the same age, and logically of equal numbers, meet each other for almost the first time to attempt to find love. Uh, it was probably a cheap excuse to try to find somebody an empty load into. Ah, but whatever. At the point I was at, it didn't matter that much. Trying to fuck someone was... I was most of my age. Well, any age, really. One of my priorities. Even though it was pretty much inaccessible. I didn't know... Okay. So, pretty much... So, so pretty much, you are going on a group date, basically what you're saying is... So, you accept it. You won't regret it, Tim. I even heard you super... I even have a surprise waiting for you. Oh, God, no. They laughed at me. They laughed like an imbecile. He is an imbecile. I was the only to enter the bar with we meaning that I understood the full meaning of his words. Time to get gas? There were seven people at the table already, waiting for me, which means there was a party of eight. Four boys and four girls. So those girls were completely unattractive. Fat, or with a big chin and weird hairstyle. Ah. The other one was already almost in bed with the big mouth guy. Oh god, that fucking scared me! I'm like, oh god! <laughs> what the hell? I'm getting into it, and all of a sudden I hear chuk, 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 on my left, on my right side. I'm like, what the fuck? The other one's already almost in bed with the big mouth guy, so those were unfuckable. This was the first time upon entering the bar. My second thought it was this most of the previous one. It was super surprising indeed. It was her. She was there drinking a beer and casually talking with another dude. A sports like type? Another one who's unfuckable. But of course, not for the same reasons. I should just get out of here. <laughs> this is so pitiful. It's not even funny. Yeah, let's get out. That was when Mike, quote unquote, my friend, noticed my rival and forcibly introduced me to the group. Shit! That was, that, that's this guy we're talking about. Hey, Tim. Come on, don't be shy. We've been waiting for you. Damn, I don't want to go back. I almost clicked my tongue out loud, but quickly decided otherwise. Maybe the big chin one could be fuckable after a couple of beers. Maybe in the dark? I sat next to my quote unquote friend. I try not to look over my right hand side of the table too much because my symmetry irritated me somehow. He said my name out loud before introducing anyone else from left to right. I don't remember any of their names and seriously, I didn't want to use the most usually part of my brain to do so. You're like, eh, if you just group polarities, your name, I don't give a fuck, let's go. And I couldn't just use you to Cassandra, but I guess I don't have to, right? <laughs> Glared at him, not hiding my displeasure at the slightest. He is clearly excited to see my reaction. And those meeting her again will make me happy about things, as if it's a gift or something. How the fuck does he know that I have a history with her anyway? Yeah, I'll time to kick his ass and chew bubble gum. I said, uh, whatever. Not the while scratching my uh, scratching my cheek, a bit flustered. That's when we take our phone out and just pretend to be called. Oh, sorry, I gotta take this. Similarly, she doesn't look at me or wait to say hi, in a voice that could have been, been Miss Concrado as a whisper. I'm like, I, I don't give a fuck. Getting out, I don't care. I was grateful for that, even though I had a harbored hatred for her the greatest part of my life. And I probably still do. The fact that she understood my reluctant face to her was that she... Her face was what saved me a little composure that I had left. Ugh. So even though she was right there on the other side of the table, I was still able to enjoy myself by drinking and chatting with those around me. Her presence didn't disturb me in the slightest, I think. It's just that in her, the heat of the moment, I was just kind of cut off guard, that's all. After all, it's not like I understood the complexity of my feelings for her anymore. I hated for her so long, so long that in the end of high school, I completely dehumanized her in my mind. And to that, the fact she had completely disappeared from my life at one point, I made sure that she was dead. Damn it! So what if so natural to be baffled by a non-human person, dead person, or looking so lovely and cheerful? Eh, that's probably a good reason. She was sexy, no longer just cute and beautiful, but sexy. She had one blue shirt which circulated her over suit skirts, well, a black shirt that couldn't be very well put on the table. It was loose and ended up a bit under her chest. So tell me, you're telling me you just want to go ahead and one-night stand this. 
Alright, cool. One night stand, guys. Uh, I'm not getting into. Uh, I'm, yeah, I'll probably give it one more shot. See if this. See, see if it's good enough. 